In my book, Blood, Fire and Gold, I describe the incredible story of Elizabeth I of England and Catherine de' Medici. I argue that you can't really understand Elizabeth I of England's reign without understanding her own relationship with the Queen Mother of France, Catherine de' Medici. But it's also true that there are like some stories inside that book in itself that deserve to be told to a wider audience. And I don't know if you've read or not my book, and I'm not here to try to sell it to you, though obviously if you do read it and buy it, I'll be eternally grateful. Thank you so much. But here I want to tell you a small story in that book that I found absolutely fascinating. I call it the Queen's War. It takes place between 1562 and 1564. Now to understand the story, the Queen's War, we need to have a bit of a background. Elizabeth became queen on 17th November 1558. By the time Catherine Meiji was still queen consort of France, she was the wife of Henry II. On the 10th July 1559, Henry II is gonna die during a Justin tournament. And I explain and I give you all the gory details in my book, so I'm not gonna do that in that video because I'm already revealing to you and a very interesting story that it comes from my book. When Henry II died, Francis II, their eldest son, became King of France. His wife was Mary Stuart, Mary Queen of Scots. Catherine de' Medici became, at that time, a political advisor, but she was quite overshadowed by the Guises, Mary Stuart's French family. However, in December 1560, Francis II is gonna die. Leaving the throne, the realm and the crown to his baby brother Charles IX who was only nine years old. So he was not ready and he was not of age to become king in his own right and he ruled in his own right. In France there was a Sally clause that prevent women to get power, to take power, to become queen in their own right like Elizabeth I or like Mary I of England. Catherine de' Medici called herself Queen Mother of France and in all but name, she became the regent of France. She chose a regent, Antoine de Bourbon, who was king of Navarre and a prince of blood, which meant that he had um, a right to the French throne. But he was so far away from court that it really mattered to her because she no longer wanted people to interfere. During that time and during her regency until 1563, but actually she remained much more longer in power I would say until around 1567, 68, then Charles is starting to become more power hungry in its own right. Catherine de' Medici is basically the ruler of France. When Elizabeth became queen, she kind of underestimated Catherine de' Medici for several reasons. She did not think much of Catherine de' Medici, who had been so humble and quiet for so many years. There was no reason for her to really take Catherine de' Medici seriously but this was about to change. The real power struggle that is going to take place between Catherine and Elizabeth started in 1562. At that time, France was experiencing the first religious civil war and the opposition, a war between the Protestants and the Catholics. The Protestants were led by Louis of Condé, who was also a prince of blood. What they asked for was simply the right to pursue their religion in peace. France was an extreme Catholic country at the time. And this was the means that was very hard to be granted. Catherine tried to grant them, but the ultra-Catholics and the power and influence of the Guise family, Mary Stuart's family, meant that the discussion and the toleration and tolerance that she would have considered was all shred into pieces. Elizabeth saw an opportunity to support the French Protestants, to establish herself as a powerful monarch as early as 1562. In doing so, she was going to confront Catherine de' Medici. This is a story of how Catherine and Elizabeth are gonna use men at their disposal to fight one another in what I call the Queen's War. In 1558, Elizabeth had imprisoned four men, four Frenchmen on the Tower of London in order to ensure that the peace treaty between France and England and Spain putting an end to the Italian wars were respected. These four men was a bargain to try to get Calais back because Calais had been an English stronghold for centuries. 
and it was the last English stronghold in France that had been lost in 1558 by Mary I. Elizabeth was obsessed in trying to get it back. Why, you might ask, simply because it would mean prestige assert her authority and affirm her legitimacy to the English throne. It would also mean that she was telling the European rulers that she was to be taken seriously. When Catherine realised that Elizabeth was sending men and money to the Protestant, the Huguenot in France, Catherine decided to play a very a difficult and dangerous game the one that was going to be really rewarding. In August 1563, Elizabeth came back from a hunting session not too far from Hampton Court and received a letter sent by Thomas Smith, her ambassador in France, informing that her other ambassador in France, Sir Nicholas Throckmorton, had been arrested and imprisoned and that himself had also been also interested in imprisoned in another castle before being released. The orders had been sent by Catherine de' Medici. Catherine de' Medici refused to give the ambassador safe conduct. It's like a passport which allows you to move from realm to realm or move within a realm. She promised Rick Morton that he was safe to do so, to move as he wanted, as he wished, because he was an ambassador. When actually, even an ambassador needed safe conduct, passports. As soon as he tried to move in France and to move territories, and we knew that he was actually meeting Protestant leaders, Huguenot leaders. So Catherine knew what she was doing. Throckmorton got arrested and sent into a very bad castle, miles away from Paris. He complained so much about his arrest, but not just that, the fact and the condition he was living in. It was absolutely brutal for him. He was stripped of all his belongings, all his letters were searched and read, and he only managed, thanks to probably one of the men there who got probably bribed by Thomas Smith, to send letters to Thomas Smith, who then would send them back to England. Thomas Smith was also arrested, but only for two weeks. I think it was just a way to threaten him. He had a safe conduct, there was no reason for his arrest, apart from showing that Catherine de' Medici was very much in charge. Elizabeth was furious when she heard what Catherine de' Medici had done. And she didn't realize how bad it was going to get for her. Elizabeth was negotiating with Catherine to get Kelly back. In the peace treaty of 1559 that put an end to the wars between France, England and Spain, there was a clause that said that within five years Calais would be given back to the English if the English remained in good terms with France. If there was no attacks, if, if there was no declaration of war. By 1563, Catherine was saying to Elizabeth, you did not follow the rules, you sent aid and help to the Huguenots, so we will not give you Calais back. But in that clause it was said that France would have to give money instead of Calais if Calais was not restored in time. But Catherine was like saying, we were not going to give you money because you actually played a part against the royal family, against the French crown. And here we had another power struggle. Catherine also hated personally Throckmorton. And it was a way for her to make sure that he understood who was truly in charge in France. Eventually Throckmorton was going to be released and he was in a very difficult position where he had basically to deal with Catherine and to negotiate with her. In my book, I start the story of Elizabeth and Catherine with Nicholas Frockmorton in the prologue, The Art of Making Peace. And where I disclose not only his hardships, what he went through, but how difficult it was for him to negotiate with Catherine de Medici. In the end, Catherine de Medici went behind Elizabeth Frockmorton's Smith's back and agreed on a peace treaty with Louise of Condé, so with the Protestants, the Huguenots. And the Huguenots turned their back on Elizabeth, leaving Elizabeth with no leverage anymore. On February 14, 1564, Catherine de' Medici received Frockmorton for an audience to negotiate. The audience was going to last three days. Obviously, in there was going to be interruptions. Clearly, Catherine refused to give back Calais. She questioned the French noblemen who were at the Tower of London and their release. 
If Kelly was refused to be given back, Catherine or the French crown had agreed before to give 500,000 crowns to the English. During that audience, Catherine offered only 120,000 crowns for the liberty of the hostages. Promoten thought it was an insult and Catherine said that if the Queen released the four French men now, her son would give her the best jewel he has in his cabinet. This was again an insult to Elizabeth and to Throckmorton. Throckmorton replied that what Elizabeth wanted was the ratification of the treaty, of the peace treaty agreed in 1559, but also the money agreed at that time. Catherine was, however, in a position of strength and refused to give away anything. Two months later, Catherine and Throckmorton met again. Throckmorton agreed for 300,000 crowns. Catherine repeated her offer, only 120,000 crowns she would give and nothing more. He kept going down, 250, 200, and she was like, 120, 120, 120. You have four them back. This piece of evidence, this um, report is quite amazing because here you see the real power struggle and how Throckmorton got very irritated and how Catherine got very irritated, but how powerful she was and how powerful she felt. In the end, Throckmorton lost and Catherine offered to pay 60, thousand crown within six weeks after the treaty was ratified at Dover and that two Frenchmen would that are held at the tower would be released as well. The other 60,000 crowns were to be paid six weeks later at Boulogne or Calais and to be transported in an English ship under the charge of Englishmen and then the two other Frenchmen would be released. Catherine's wall terms were accepted. On April 23rd 1564, the peace between France and England was proclaimed and fire of joys were made in all places. It was a true victory for the French and it was the first Queen's War. At that time, Catherine became extremely powerful and Elizabeth realized that she was probably her equal. She never forgot what happened during that time and she never made the same mistake to underestimate Catherine de Medici. I really hope you enjoyed that little video on the Queen's War, which is part of my prologue and one of my chapters in Blood, Fire and Gold, and that you will want to know more about the complex rivalry. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for another video. Thank you so much. Bye!